Oh, we need a name for this. Uh. A special. A very special. Very special white Christmas. How about that? Sure. I mean, okay, fine. We're gonna go with that. Okay. Hello, and welcome to a very special white Christmas. I'm your host, Lee Montano, and I'm here joined with my brother, Robert Montano. Um, you may know me from The Immortals if you listen to The Immortals podcast at theartimmortal.com. Uh, I also run The Immortals, The Art Immortal Twitter account, so if you like those funny tweets, that's all me. Uh, so, it's the holidays, it's that time of year we all, where we all gather and uh, hang out with our family, and whether that be for good or bad, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we all have those like traditions that we have, and White Christmas is one of ours. Yeah, we've been watching White Christmas every year for the past years. That sounds about right, yeah. Yeah, something like that. And it's basically, it's really great because Christmas Eve is our big deal, and every whoever wakes up first gets White Christmas, puts it in the DVD player, whatever we're using for it that year, and it plays non-stop on repeat until dinner which because we're a white midwestern family is generally around 4 p.m ish because yeah. it's a holiday so yeah. you have to have dinner weirdly early so it's not lunch early. it's not supper it's dinner i don't get it either yeah Ugh. so we end up watching this in full about four or five times mm-hmm on Christmas Eve. So we've seen this movie a couple of times. Maybe once or twice. And one of the reasons why we love it is because it's, it's just a fun Christmas movie. It's not serious at all. And it's just, it's fun to make fun of. It is fun to make fun of. And like you were saying, it the stakes are so, so low. low. So low. There's, there's nothing. The, nothing the highest stake, stake the, the thing at stake is Oh no, the general might have a kind of bummer Christmas. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, there's yeah. the sort of the romantic tension, but then it's like. There's, yeah. They're gonna. Uh, the only reason there was romantic tension there was because of the time limit. Yeah. If that hadn't been there, it would have just. Like, he could have just gone and they could have talked we're we're getting ahead of ourselves though we we have a whole movie to watch so what we're going to do is we're going to watch this beloved christmas movie white christmas starring bing crosby danny k rosemary clooney and vera ellen with the incomparable vera ellen and she's wonderful and with all the music written by irving berlin um it includes white christmas which is that one christmas song that you've probably heard a billion times and used in every other christmas commercial i think something like that so uh yeah we're watching it on netflix because that's where it's available right now and i have netflix so why not and so we have it started at zero 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 right now so we're gonna do a countdown so you can watch along with our commentary three two one So Paramount proudly presents the, the first, first picture, picture in, in Vista Vision. So Vista Vision is actually kind of a cool technology that they, and this is the first time that they've used it. It has something to do with how they produced film at the time. Um, it makes it more high definition than other things that they had. So it's pretty cool. We got Irving Berlin. Didn't they have to use fancy cameras for it? Yeah, so they had to use, uh, that's kind of what it was, like they, the fancy cameras and they had a fancy sound set up too, which is why, fun fact, I read on the Wikipedia page earlier, uh, it actually had, it's the reason, because it has fancy sound is the reason why you cannot have a high definition soundtrack of this movie. Oh. Yeah. Well... Fuck this division then. Yep, it kind of sucks. <laughs> like, fuck you, this division. Yeah. Gosh. I mean, they didn't know that high definition was going to be a thing. Yeah. And that people would want everything on Blu ray. How much of my language should I watch? I mean, we say curse words fairly regularly, so. Okay, I mean, cool. You can, you can say fuck. I was I mean, going to say this earlier. Yeah. Um, a person we forgot to mention who's in this cast who is also incomparable. Is Mary Wicks. 
Oh my gosh, Mary Wicks. We'll we'll talk about her more when she pops up towards the end of the movie. Oh she's like towards the middle of middle the movie. Of the middle. Early middle. She show, honey, she's there right when they get to the lodge. I don't Okay, so that's one of the problems that we have with this movie is I don't think I've actually sat down and watched this movie beginning to end with ah. un- uninterrupted mm. in five or six years. Yeah. It, so we, the we, plot kind of jumps around for me. We've watched it a lot. Now, watched it all in one sitting. That's a different story. Straight through. I've seen it probably under 50 times. Yeah. Which is saying something for me in a movie that I love. Um, so, okay, we to got to talk about what's on screen, I think, too. We're there, uh, it's World War II, end of the war, nearish, 1944, December 1944. We just saw Bing Crosby and Danny Kay putting on their two-man show. The, the backstory that you don't really get, you kind of piece together over the times, is uh, Bing Crosby is some writer-producer, musical producer guy, and then Danny Kay swindles him out of a job. Swindles himself into a job and Danny Kay into a rena or not Danny Kay, Bean Crosby into a renaissance for his producer career. Because he was a good musician and then he became a producer. But again, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Ah. We have the general. This general is supposed to be important later on. Um, He's one of the good guy generals that you always hear about that's tough on the troops, but he loves them the most. That guy. And that you would do anything for the general we all dream to be. As is illustrated in the upcoming song. Yes. Oh yeah, remember, the periodic explosions are there to remind you that the war is still going on even though it's Christmas time. And it's a soundstage. And it's a soundstage. The war is still happening even though it's a soundstage. It's not even a well done soundstage. I mean... Okay. Uh. And now we have... Oh yeah, White Christmas. White Christmas. Well, okay, this is the first time you see it in the movie. It's yeah, kind no, of a big deal. It's, it is a big deal. I'm not... I was just sort of halfway singing along because I don't know where they are in the audio and I don't know where we oh, are in the audio because we're listening to this without audio. Not without audio, just really, really quietly. I mean, I heard stuff. Okay, I can I can hear stuff if both of us are completely silent. I said quietly. I think it's really adorable that they have a music box that just so happens to have <laughs> White Christmas on it. Okay. A hand crank music box. <laughs> they have a hand crank music box with White Christmas on it because they planned the entire their entire stage show around the fact that they had a hand crank music box with White Christmas on it. Oh, see, that makes too much sense. What? For, How for, does that... For this movie, that makes too much sense. Because it makes sense. Uh, that's too much sense. It's just what you do. Like, it's just, it's such a good moment. Mm. The, the war stopped just so Bing Crosby can sing. Almost makes you forget the child abuse. Yeah, Bing Crosby is not a good dad. At all. So, we're at this time period in Hollywood, um, the 1950s, where everyone's kind of a shithead. Like, just understood. Everyone's kind of a shithead. Whether they're an alcoholic, whether they're a womanizer, whether they're an abuser, everyone's kind of a shithead. So, that being said... Bing Crosby also is a shithead. But he sings real well. Mm hmm. Surprise, General. Oh, yeah, the General is watching the whole time. How long were you here? I saw it all. I, I don't understand this whole sacrifice thing. Like. Like, yes, Captain Wallace is a good entertainer, but, I mean, it's, you're obviously on the front line of a war. Maybe not. Maybe, yeah. Maybe postpone Christmas Eve. I don't know. Nah, I mean, you gotta do something to celebrate, and it's not like they did a lot. 
No, they just had a stage show next to explosions. Though explosions are very clearly in the distance. Uh, yeah, okay, fair enough. As far in the distance as you can get in... On this size soundstage. Yeah, on this very small soundstage. <laughs> Oh, and now we're really sad because the really nice general New is general. leaving. New general. He's a strict by the book sh- shoot head general. Sh- shoot head general. Where are you going with that? Sh- shoot head general. Straight shooter? Sh- shoot head general. So. That's just a thing now. No, I don't think it is. He's a sh- Shoot head general. If I keep saying it enough, it's not gonna be a thing. It'll, it's it'll, not, it'll happen. No, not gonna be a thing. So now they're all sad. I just happen to have that slam bang finish. Oh, again, everyone just so happens to know this song. It's musical magic. Ah, see, this is the song I was talking about, illustrating the point that she was making earlier. It's that this is a good guy general, and everybody loves him. And I have to admit, like, it is, it's a very wonderful, nostalgic, Oh yeah. This, I cry every time. It's such, like, and we're not in the military. Nope. Not at all. I've never had a general I've wanted to follow. I've never had a manager that inspired great confidence. (laughs) Yeah, it's, it's, I'm just, and now here I am sitting here like, I love you. I I will follow you to hell and back. General who I've never heard of. Yeah, some no-name general. See, again, they decided to have a Christmas show when they're being actively bombed. Like, it just seems like a poor idea in the first place. When, well, when else are you going to have a Christmas show? When you're know. constantly being actively bombed? I don't know. Maybe wait. How about have a New Year's Day one? Sorry, guys, we couldn't celebrate Christmas. We were kind of being bombed at the time. Remember how this war didn't have an end in sight? This is the end of the war. It's 1944. Yeah, so we're closing in on Germany, but, like, we're also tired after several years of fighting and not getting to celebrate Christmas. Yeah, that's fair. Do we know where they're at besides overseas? I assumed Europe. Yes. Based on the style of the buildings. I would assume Europe as well, but I didn't know if they had ever said, when we were in Paris together, or... When we were overtaking Berlin, I didn't know if they had said anything about that. I don't know. Okay, like, this is the dumbest thing ever. Like, why would a soldier be that inept? Oh! Oh! I like how the wall fell a good five, six feet from where that rubble fell from. Right. <laughs> there was I also obvious... like how it fell out of the rafters yeah. <laughs> on the soundstage. stage. So this is the injury that causes the action for the rest of the plot. If Danny Kay hadn't saved Bing Crosby, we never would have been here. If only. If only. If only we hadn't made this movie, but you did. Well, it's not that bad. We haven't gotten that bad yet. I don't think we do in this one. I mean, I, I will be the first person to admit when I when a movie isn't great. This is not a great movie. Oh, it's not a great movie. No, it but is, it's not bad. No, it's a perfectly fine movie. If I were to give it, if I were to rate it out of five, I would give it a three. It is a perfectly fine movie. There's nothing offensive about, well, um, okay. we'll get to that. <laughs> and that's why I like to give my things a ten point scale. Mm-hmm. Because I can show that it's a little bit better than just a three because I think it's like a seven maybe a six and a half six and a half seven because the songs are really catchy the songs were really great the costumes are beautiful except the one (laughs) there are several ones that are (laughs) issues We'll get to this. But overall, the costumes are stunning. Yeah. like The I, ideas of the costumes are all gorgeous. The fit, maybe there are some problems. Yeah. Yeah, see, VE Day, they won Europe. I was real close to it. And they're on that same soundstage. And now we have this wonderful montage, which I have to say, it's a very great 
well done little montage we of have, Irving Berlin hits. Yeah, we got we have. Uh, I like Heat Wave. Heat Wave is so good. We have little newspaper headlines from Variety talking about Wallace and Davis, Bing Crosby, and Danny Kaye's new duo act, and then. Buffo, which I don't know what that means, interspersed with them actually performing, and it's a cute little montage. I have to say, it's it's well done. I enjoy it a lot. It's hard not to sing along. It's so hard it's not so to sing along. Hard not to sing along, and that's why we're, we got real quiet there because we always kind of <laughs> like that's one of the things is like over, <coughs> over the years we have like. Not necessarily developed dance routines, but like, but like little moments where we always try to find each other and like do the same little movement at the same time. Yeah, because while th- this movie's playing on repeat throughout the entire day, we're running all over the house, cleaning, straightening, decorating, okay. cooking, entertaining the early guests. Because they're always early people. The ones who are like, dinner's at 7, let's show up at 2.30. Yeah. Uh, this is just and the colors look really really good on this I have to say I've always liked that really dark burgundy with, against that like bright blue that fake blue yeah yeah I've, I've always really liked that although Bing Crosby's jacket's a little big on him he, that's the style he liked I know he wears loose coats throughout the entire movie which is and weird grandpa pants grandpa <gasps> pants were in style oh, oh I love her I love her too. Doris. Doris. Oh. She's just, she's so wonderful. (laughs) So part of the the plot is that Bing Crosby's now a good guy and like. Incredibly generous. Given the whole cast like paid Christmas off and everything and. He doesn't give them paid Christmas off. He gives them paid winter break. Yeah. They get 10 days off with pay. Which is... For yeah. a performer. That's insane. Of, like, for a chorus girl. That's that's pretty great. Yeah. I want 10 days off with pay. Uh, ditto, right? Ugh. So, uh... Danny Kaye's character is always trying to hook Bing, Crosby char- Bing Crosby's character up. Because Bing Crosby is a workaholic. Oh, I'd never noticed until now that Doris looked directly into the camera. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay, no, this comes one of the weirdest lines. But kiss my foot or <laughs> have an apple. Like, what does that what? even mean? We found out what kiss my foot means. Did we? Yes. So I asked our grandmother, our 84, 85 year old grandmother. Real old. I asked her, what does this mean? And she said, well, kiss my foot is kind of like, kiss my ass. Like, you don't want to talk from so just kiss my ass. Have an apple? I have no idea. So we have no idea what have oh an apple God. means. So if you, wonderful listener, knows what kiss my foot or have an apple means in this context, please let us know. Because it's, oh, it's been a mystery. And it's very hard to Google search it. Mm-hmm. So if you could let us know, that'd be great. I think we need someone of equivalent age to our grandmother from the East Coast. That might work, yeah. Because our grandmother's from the Midwest. Because, you yeah. know, that's where we're from. Yeah. The Midwest. So now Wallace and Davis are arguing because Bing Crosby's character is a workaholic and Danny Kay just wants to get laid. Don't we all? I mean, I feel like that's the gist. You know, see, those pants look real bad on Bing Crosby, because he's got a dumpy-shaped body. He really does. And you can dress a dumpy-shaped body to look not terrible. This is not one of those cases. This isn't the outfit. No. That's not the... Cl- and it's not like he's got a out-of-shape body. No. He's <laughs> just kind of potato-shaped. <laughs> he is He's a kind of... Because you can tell he's not, like, yeah. out of shape. But he's a potato and potato. that's fine. People have potato bodies. Yeah. But those high-waisted trousers looked real snazzy on Danny K. Yeah. Because he's got that trim, live dancer's build. He's really thin. Well, he, not really thin, but he's, yeah, lies. Lies yeah, is great. Yeah, he's got, like, foot and a half of waist. <laughs> Where Bing Crosby does not. <laughs> Where Bing Crosby has, like, an inch and a half yeah. of waist. 
Rogers and Hammerstein. <laughs> they missed an opportunity to rhyme Frankenstein with R- Hammerstein. Yeah, that <laughs> Frankenstein. Ugh. <laughs> oh. So Bing Crosby did have a lot of kids. He, well, I mean, wasn't he Catholic? I don't know. I don't remember. Probably. He did the child abuse. Mm. So. We don't want to stereotype. Not all Catholic people abuse their children. No, not all Catholic people abuse their children. Just historically speaking. Yeah, those trousers do look really good on him. Yeah. Like. And those are, I would call those trousers. Those are yes, trousers. Yes, those are trousers. Daddy K could get it. I mean, yeah. He's he's a good looking old Hollywood dude. I mean, I wouldn't. I don't think I would long term date him. I don't think I could get past that nose. I mean, his nose isn't terrible. But it's I it's would, a lot of nose. I would always think he always seems like the type of person who's like, who wants to outshine the other person. I can't handle that. Oh yeah, if someone tries to one up me, I can't ooh, do that. especially about something I know more about. Yeah. Ooh, we got railroad tickets. Those will oh, be important later. This is the other conflict in the movie. Such a, again, such a minor conflict. The <laughs> sister act. That's <laughs> a good movie. <laughs> yes. Oh. <laughs> Benny the dog faced boy. <laughs> I, like, th- that's just so mean. Call someone dog faced boy. And I looked at that, the picture of him that they show later, and I'm just like, he's not the no. worst looking guy. Freckle face hangs the dog face boy. Freckles are cute. Yeah. I don't know why, but I always felt like this came too late in the movie. And even though it's not, it's like really quick, but it just always feels like it's too late. You know I, I mean? love her just sitting here in this chair watching just for the drama. I'm not at a bar, I'm not at a table, I'm just here. She's literally sitting in a chair Ooh, in the middle of nowhere. Look at me. <laughs> That's me. You're, yeah, that would be you, your inconsiderate ass pulling up a chair in the <laughs> middle of the aisle. Just like, I hear drama's about, to, I hear that the camera's about to pan right past here. So I'm just gonna sit my ass right here. Ooh. Now, this robe. We're now mm. introduced to Vera Ellen and Rosemary Clooney. Rosemary Clooney, yes, is the aunt of George Clooney, great yes. aunt. Something like that, something relative. Like that. Relative, they are related. She's also a wonderful singer. Can't dance worth shit, but she's a wonderful singer. Uh, Vera Ellen is the one in the white. Rosemary Clooney is the one in the red. Vera Ellen is an incomparable dancer. She's a wonderful dancer. Can't sing. Can't sing at all. She, uh may or may not have been dubbed for this movie. Yes, she was dubbed in lip sync. Isn't there one song where Rosemary Clooney does both vocal tracks? I think it's Snow. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, because that's the one that Rosemary Clooney tries to get, tries to do as a solo on some yeah. of her collection albums, and it, it doesn't does work. Well. No. I've heard it a couple of times. Oh. So, so now we hear that Judy is real shady. Because she knows that Wallace and Davis were in the same company as their brother, and she's using that connection to get them basically an interview. I mean, work it, girl. Yeah, I I would. It's all about networking. I hate what they did to Rosemary Clooney's hair. It's not a cute look. Especially when Vera Ellen's got that snatched back updo with the curls and the waves. And then, like, to be fair, though, I think that's just how Rosemary Clooney wore her hair. That's, that, yeah. All the time. That, see, there's the trick. They didn't actually style Rosemary Clooney's hair. She just showed up. Yeah, hey, honey, just show up. Okay. What you do is good. You're here for your voice anyway, honey. We've got the pretty one cast. (laughs) No. Rosemary Clooney's pretty. She's pretty, but she's not Vera Ellen. No, Vera Ellen's (laughs) gorgeous. And I... I've always loved these outfits. So we yes. we are now being introduced to the Haynes sisters via their talent. Um, notice the uh, limited choreography because Rosemary Clooney cannot dance. And even with the limited choreography, Vera Ellen does it better. Yes. 
she just does like it moving for her is just like a graceful act she doesn't think about it and she's just pretty I love the singer for Vera Ellen no she does a great job but it's not Vera Ellen especially when you just hear her talking voice like right they didn't get someone with even similar no. tone I love that part. So good. That's one. Of, that's another one of those moments where we always try to find each other. <laughs> yeah, this whole number. Yes. Eventually, I'm gonna do this one. Yes, because I'm a drag queen. Ba, 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 ba. But yeah, eventually I'm gonna perform this one. Uh, but I need a ostrich feather fan, and those are so expensive. They are weirdly expensive, yeah. Well, not weirdly, but they are expensive. Yeah, like, that fan's like $300. Yeah. They are gorgeous fans, though. Rosemary Clooney is dancing her ass off. Vera Ellen is sleeping. Just spinning about. Taking a little nap. (laughs) (laughs) Making eyes at the camera. It's so gross. It is real gross. But Vera Ellen does a great job at it because... She looks at the camera so much. Because she, her whole job is staring into the camera. That's a fun drinking game we play sometimes. Drink every time Vera Ellen stares at the camera. It's a lot. It's a lot. Ugh, these outfits. So gorgeous. Like, I love pretty much every single thing that they wear. And it's just beautiful. Every little thing that they are wearing? Every little thing that they do. That's the wrong song. That Not the right song at all. Nope. I love that pink dress. That pink is so great, and I think it works because it's kind of, it's not necessarily corseted, but it's like cut. It's cut in. It's not corseted. In fact, you can tell that top part is mostly sheer. Yeah. I think. It looks like it. Because, see, this restoration is better than the restoration on our DVD. Yeah. It's probably truer to life. However, our restoration, the colors were a bit poppier. Yeah. Freckle See? face Haynes, the dog face boy. He's kind of cute. He's not that bad looking. That's actually Alpha Alpha from the original Little Rascals. You're kidding. No, Wikipedia told me that today, so. Mm. Thanks. Also, Rosemary Clooney's dress, like, it just, it's a perfect fit for her, and that color works so So good. Well. Oh my gosh. Like, if I had, like, I never would have picked that color for her, but it just works. Mm-hmm. It works. I might have picked that color, but it wouldn't have been my first choice. I, it'd be like in the twenties of how far down I would get on my list. Maybe. But I want to put everyone in jewel tones anyway. So. Yeah. Oh, I wish I could see the beading on her dress better. Yeah, I'm sure it's not anything too spectacular. No, I'm just trying to tell if it's. Oh no, you might be wrong on that. Oh, here, look at my sister. Because it's it's high-necked and she's got the neck beaded, but then there's, like, the silver beads are in straight lines, but they're of varying lengths of line. So it, it's pretty. It isn't... And it, like, tapers up as if it were, like, a... It's pretty. Yeah, it's a really pretty dress. The skirt has some neat details, too. It's weird to normally I'm always distracted by like singing and listening to the words. You I'm seeing attention? I'm seeing details more. What? When you stop and pay attention you see more details? Like why can't I see that woman in the background's necklace better? Because it's oh, they're that's not a... in focus. It's probably costume jewelry. Why are Who you... cares? It's pretty. I'll just give you a jar of glitter and be done with it. No. A jar of loose rhinestones. My bad. And some super glue. <laughs> so I can start stoning things. See, okay, now this is a weird moment because they get closer to argue with each other. Yeah, I... Mm, that doesn't quite make sense. And then Vera Ellen and Danny Kay are like, Ooh! Ooh. Look how close they're getting all up in on and in one another. Rosemary Clooney's dress needs a necklace. Yeah. 
A little necklace would be nice. Yeah. Uh, and then they, they smile. Hate, they hate each other. Yeah, they're like with smiling at each other too. Like, no wonder the two of them get the wrong impression. Mm-hmm. So this is kind of like it's a farce because if you get down to it, yeah, like everything could be solved if people just stopped for half a second and talked to one another. <laughs> yeah, talk to each other like a reasonable human being. Mm-hmm. And, ugh. Those are show choir earrings that she's got on. Like, I just, I I love this moment between them, because they are brand new strangers. They've never met before, and here they go into a dance sequence. Yep. And one of the best ones in the entire movie. Yep. I love this dance sequence. It's sort of like the entire movie of fame. Okay. None of them know it. None of them, oh, they all no. just go to the same school and here's every one of these giant choreographed numbers. Also note how Vera Ellen does not sing in this song. She just dances and looks at the camera. A lot. A lot. So oh much. my god. So my theory on it is that Vera Ellen is a stage performer and is used to staring at the audience. And so she treats the camera as the audience and therefore stares at them a lot. I mean, I feel like that's probably why. Like, there she goes again. Fucking staring at the camera. But someone... Right here, right here. We could literally just have someone standing, like, ten feet to the side of the camera. Yeah. With a little birdie. Yeah. Like, here. Over here, Vera. Over here. You can do it. Just look over here, hon. You notice... Woo! Yeah, you notice how Danny Kay, like, never looks at the camera. Almost like he knows what he's doing. Right? Sorry, that woo was because she did a real good spin. She spins right Every well. spin. She also probably only weighs like 80 pounds here. True. Let's be honest. So, we haven't mentioned this really, but Vera Ellen's real anorexic. Yeah. She was a dancer in the 1940s and 50s. It makes sense as to why there are lots of eating disorders. And I'm sure she definitely just didn't eat enough calories for how many she was burning every day. Yeah. Which could be just a nutrition thing as well. So. But. She's really thin. Yeah, and so all of her costumes are very high-necked because that's not a great look. Yeah. Um. But the costumer really knew how to dress her. Yeah. Specifically her. Everyone is looks good in this movie. Vera Ellen looks stupendous. All of her costumes are amazing. She there's not a bad one. There's one bad one. There's okay. There's one bad one. There's one bad one. And it's all bad because it's fitted wrong. Yeah. If, if it, it were fit better, it wouldn't be bad. But it was fit wrong. Yeah. I love this moment. So this good. Little, this little tap dance on top of... Some random boat. Yeah. Yeah, Novello's is a really successful restaurant for being on a soundstage. <laughs> it's so obviously a soundstage. Yeah. Like... Pretty was, painted clouds. Like, I do Is Is that just a, a time period thing? Like, we know it's a soundstage. You do too. Fuck it. Let's do it. Also, this random... Random coaster thing, because that looks cool. Yeah, hand coaster thing. More dancing, more looking so at good. the camera. So good. Just. Uh, she does a wonderful job. Everything she does. Like, I'm sure that there were numerous takes and everything, but she, she does such a great job. And her and Danny Kaye dance really, really well together. Look at that! So cute! I don't I don't think I've ever noticed the detail in the front of her skirt before. I think I may have noticed it before, but n- never really been aware. It's really yeah, pretty. It's really cute. I like that. Oh no! Here's Warren, here to arrest you. There's more conflict that's never resolved. Yeah! Ooh! Right? <laughs> a plot hole bigger than the hole they allegedly burned. So they burned a hole in the carpet, and that's why the landlord's upset. I mean, it's pretty obvious, in my opinion at least, 
that they totally burnt that hole in the carpet. Oh, no. They totally did. They just didn't want to pay. Yeah, which is fine. They're I mean, poor performers. Yeah, I get it. That makes sense. They're trying to make it big. Yeah. They're getting ready to go try to make it big up in Vermont. Vermont. Hey, they could get scouted for Broadway. Yes, only because they happen to be going with Wallace and Davis, but... Well, I was going to say because it's, you know, geographically close to New York. Better shot at getting scouted in Vermont than getting scouted in Wyoming. Florida. They should have stayed in Florida. They, I mean, probably, but then they would have had to pay how much money? Uh, fair enough. They were probably like, what's the first job out of state that we can take? That one. Bye. Vermont. What we don't know is that they are actually on a crime spree. Cross-country, swindling landlords. Yep, and rich producers. No, I think the producer bit is all genuine. Uh, They go legit in Vermont. I love this little mustard yellow outfit, although it's real gross. Cause you this can... is the bad costume. Oh, this isn't the one I was thinking. Oh, this is the one I was thinking. This was like my second bad costume for her. This is it's... my bad costume for her. It's such a cute look. I just don't like the fit. Because you can 100% see her rib cage. Yeah, like they, they put like the smallest skirt they could find for her and the tiniest and belt tiniest belt. at the worst point like, like it sits right under her ribs yeah and, and she wears it a lot considering how many times she changes costumes in this movie she, does wear it a lot. she wears this one a lot <laughs> so now Danny K the drag queen that he is um is trying, is going to convince Bing Crosby to uh, perform. Do a little, uh, little, uh, little drag, little tiptoeing around, and little drag, little heels and little wigs and the gowns and stuff. No heels, no wigs, no gowns. Lazy, like, mmm, mmm. I'd clap for them, but I wouldn't tip. <laughs> oh, okay. So That's me. I'm the sheriff eating the free food. Hell yeah. I mean, I want free food. Oh, coffee? Hell yeah. Hell I mean, Novello's is supposed to be a really good restaurant. Yeah. The Hain sisters. They didn't even put on a nail. But, like, why? See, okay, this is one of those moments that I love. Because these two look like they are having an absolute blast. Danny K K looks like he's having an absolute blast. Bing Crosby looked kind of pissed off. Sometimes. Sometimes he looks like he's having fun. Yeah. Um... But Danny Kay is loving every single moment. Yes. He is living his life. He loves the sash. He loves the bracelets and the bangles and the, the big huge... The glitter. The big the glitter. huge fan. He loves it all. He's just imagining himself as Vera Ellen. Yeah. I mean, I do too. Same. But... Who doesn't? Right? So, I, I love this moment. It- it doesn't make any sense for the plot. No, it doesn't. At because all. if the two of them really wanted to distract the audience, they could have just performed literally any of their songs. Yep. That they're super famous for. Yep. But they don't. They they do this one again, which I think is weird. Like, how often do you have musicals repeat the exact same song? And this one does Sisters a lot. But they do it for plot reasons, and I appreciate that. But it it does it plays sisters three times, I think. I think it's just three. I think it's three times. I love Danny Kay's gray shoes. Oh, he... I want those gray shoes. Just they're having a blast. They're probably drunk off their asses. I mean, I would be. I'd like to be. So, <laughs> take a bow. Take a bow because Danny Kay is a beautiful, beautiful woman. Oh shit! There's we might actually wait. Why are they running? 
I don't know. They're they're there's not no in trouble reason. with the sheriff. No, like the only thing they they might. Oh, this would be fun for Sarah and Meredith. Uh, could they get in trouble for this? I mean, they're kind of obstructing justice, maybe. But the sheriff doesn't know that. I I, I the don't... sheriff has been in the office eating food the entire time. I have no the idea. The Haynes sisters have allegedly just been in their fitting room, getting ready for their final number. Doesn't that guy always remind you of Piglet? Oh my god. Now that you've said that, he does. Right? Like, every time I hear this little conductor make noise, it just reminds me of a... I'm never going to unsee that. Right? Oh, I hate yeah. you. Well, welcome to the life I've been living. Ugh. Oh, now Danny Kay can't find the tickets because he gave oh. them to the Haynes sisters. Oh! Yep. Must have left them in my girdle. Mm. Oh, girdles are what women wear. But as if Bean Crosby wasn't currently wearing a girdle. Or Danny Kay. Or Danny Kay. Yeah. Do you see his waist snatched? I mean, they were popular for men to wear at this time period. How much to Vermont? Why are we going to Vermont? We're going to New York. It's beautiful in Vermont. Tons of snow. And that hot is, blondes. That snow is important. It's a plot point for some reason. I, like, their bickering is so wonderful, though. They're like an old married couple. Mm-hmm. They work really well together. So originally, in fact... Danny Kaye's part was going to be played by Fred Astaire, making this the third Bing Crosby, Fred Astaire, Irving Berlin movie. But Fred Astaire didn't want to be in his contract anymore and backed out and said, I'm out. And then Bing Crosby was like, well, shit, I don't want to do this either. And then he came back. And then Danny Kaye was like, I guess I'll do it. Well, good, because Fred Astaire's a bit of an asshole. Well, yeah. Yeah, bit Again, of an asshole. Everybody at this time period was a bit of a shithead. I hate the... They... Okay. Mm. I'll get to the drinks that they get. Because we don't get to... We don't get to sing along with the song, so I can just talk through them. Yeah, we can. Oh, oh, he figures it Too out. Blonde. Oh, it's the Hang Sisters. And now Danny Kay has that wonderful, sad puppy dog face. Oh, he's adorable. He is. I would love to have mimosas with him. Yes! I, like, I think mimosas and a nice brunch. Would be so good to have he, with Danny Kay. He would be a wonderful brunch companion, I feel. Mm-hmm. He wouldn't do this no Bob, would he? Oh, yeah, he is Bob Wallace. I can never keep them straight. No, it's just... It's just... Danny Kay and Bean Crosby and Rosemary Clooney and Vera Ellen. And here, oh, here it is. It's the worst. This is yes. This is the probably the worst shot of her in the mustard outfit. Look, it's, it's like so she's got four bad. boobs because the bottom boobs are her ribs. It's so bad. Ugh. But it's a cute look. It's a look. It's a great... Just the ribs. And it looks great on her. Like, the color looks really great on her. That mustard yellow on mustard yellow. Mm-hmm. It's a bold choice. Nowadays... It's monotone, but... Nowadays, she'd good. probably have a brown skirt. Ooh, with a... So cute. That would look cute with a brown skirt. What kind of fucking lemonade? Because remember, they ordered lemonade. I'm guessing that this is a movie where they didn't care about continuity. Or did they get a lemon, like... Lemon malt or something? No, not That's lemon something. malt. I don't know how that That's works. That's not a thing. I don't know. No, I mean, like, a lemon, like, slushy or something. Maybe. Because, like... lemonades were different in the 1950s. Maybe a lemonade meant something else. If you know, or if you know anybody who may know... Please send them our way. Email us at the immortals at. Oh shit, I don't remember what our email address is. Find us at the immortals pod on Twitter and talk to me there. <laughs> I can't remember our email address. Wow. I don't, I'm not the one who does the email. I'm not the one who says it all on the wrap up. I know the Twitter only because I log into it every day. 
Oh, here's the song that Rosemary Clooney tries to sing as a solo act. Which, again... Does not work. Does not work. Rosemary Clooney is a wonderful performer and, I would say, outstanding talent, but... uh, These drinks that he's pouring right here, I look at those and I'm like, "Mm," because they're probably made with egg whites. Yep, almost 100%. That was the thing in the 1950s. That's how you make cocktails. Yeah, with a, just a raw egg white in your cocktail. Yeah. Super tasty. Makes it foamy. Yep. Sure does. Pretty this, sure... That voice doesn't match. Not at all. Because, like, isn't this the one where Rosemary Clooney does both parts? Yeah, I think so. I think it is. How I long to skate. Singing the same part because it's the same person. Yeah. Because this is what you do when you're hanging out on a train with your friends. You make a diorama. I mean, that's what me and my friends do on trains. Make shitty dioramas? Yep. That is a really (laughs) shitty diorama. It's so bad. Okay, but you had had cheap ass decorations on the middle of your table with a couple of napkins. Yeah. Why was her napkin blue? I don't know why they'd even need to decide why they needed to do that in the first place. Why they decided to do that. He's just pretending to make the noises with his mouth. It's actually just really dry skin. Yeah. I've done that before. Say. <laughs> Normally I can do it with my feet, not with my hands as much. Oh. You rub your feet together? Well, like my heels, I can like sit there and rub them next to side by side. Is this a hobby you have? <laughs> It makes that noise sometimes. <laughs> That's gross. <laughs> Only when they get really dry and then I put on lotion. Girl, I'll get you a pumice stone for Christmas. How about that? Dear God, yes. Oh, so now they're on a train. They've been on a train. They're still on a train. Half this movie's on a train. It's, That's a lie. It's not. I promise. It's really not. Thank God. Oh my Ugh. gosh. This would be I, a terrible movie if it was all on a train. Oh. I don't like travel movies where the whole movie's about the travel. Oh, there's some good ones. No. <laughs> I mean, I like Star Dealing Limited a lot. You wouldn't like that one. I um, wouldn't. I don't like most Wes Anderson films. I'm glad that you recognize it's a Wes Anderson film. Of course I do. It's got Owen Wilson in it, and it's not a comedy. <laughs> it is kind of a comedy. It's not a a dumb comedy. Oh, that's fair. <clears throat> I'm trying to remember... If I'm Owen Wilson does a critically acclaimed film, wow. it's a Wes Anderson film. That's fair. Or no, Bamba. I love the just little... That Papa Leopard print at the top of her little black hat. It's so Ooh, cute. Oh, it's so cute. Bob, Betty, Judy, and... Uh-huh. Danny Kay. Danny Kay. <laughs> So they get in Vermont and there's no snow that they were promised. Oh no! Where's all the snow? Like, this just doesn't make, like... So dumb. Surely, surely they are used to this. Oh, she has a matching leopard bag! She's so fashionable. And that bow on her coat. Oh! Mm. Style icon. She, the costumer, dressed her extravagantly well. Mm-hmm. Everyone was dressed nice. The costumer nice. did a great job. Vera Ellen was dressed phenomenally. Yeah, like if you just compare Rosemary Clooney and Vera Ellen right there, two different people. That's like, such handsome luggage. I mean... I like the yeah. tweed suitcase there. I like that leather one. With the V detail mm-hmm. on it. Come, listen to us talk about luggage and how different luggage style is it. Are styles ours? Oh, I'm. Stage. I'm sorry. Were you here for a, a movie commentary? We're supposed to be talking. It's I funny. was here to talk about Theoreti- luggage. Theoretically, it's funny. I was here to talk about luggage. I said theoretically. My bad. There she is, yes. Mary Wicks, who was also in another movie we've mentioned, Sister Act. Yes. Um, also in Hunchback of Notre Dame. Oh yeah, she's one of the gargoyles. She was. That was her last role. That's weird. Because she died during it. In fact, the last third of the movie isn't her. That's weird. Right? Ooh. But this is her. (laughs) 
And at this point, she's young. She looks like she's 60. But she's not. She's, like, younger than being Crosby. She's just, she's just one of those people that, like, looks 60. Mm. Like Sam Elliott. Like, he's looked 60 for the past 40 years. Mm-hmm. Mary, which just has an old woman face. Yep. Oh, there he is. Maggie Gyllenhaal, similar. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. Nothing against her. But once Maggie Gyllenhaal hits 40 and starts settling into her looks more... How old is she? I think she's in her 40s. Oh, is she? I don't know. Whatever. Once she starts get settling into her old lady looks, she's gonna... That's when her acting career is really gonna start, like, soaring into, like... I agree. Like, Dame Judi Dench levels. Yeah. Maybe not quite there, but, like... I think she'll do well. She'll do really well as doing old lady roles. So, we have the general. The general turns out to be working at this the ski lodge that the Haynes sisters are booked at and that Danny Kay and Bing Crosby have decided to join them with at to they're surprised a general what oh my god he's a landlord so he's he the general the once successful well loved general is now the owner of a ski lodge that has no customers because there's no snow Susan Waverly's real cute. Well, yeah. She's adorable. But I think she has she's like two posted. lines. Yeah. One of them is, oh, Grandpa. Yep. Very awestruck. Yeah. Oh, see, he's still being a nice guy, willing to pay them full price and everything. Full wages? Full price sounds weird. Full wages. Yeah, full wages. Don't, don't, don't pay them full price. That... That sounds weird. That sounds like you're buying them. I'm not buying them. They're performers, not hookers. Danny Kay, on the other hand. Danny Kay, on the other hand, I bet you could get him for a real good price. (laughs) Free. Isn't he dead? They're all dead. (laughs) Everyone... Here's a hint, audience. If there's a person on screen, they're dead. They're dead. See, like, I watch a lot of movies, there are a lot of older movies for the Immortals podcast, which you should listen to. Mm. We update on Thursdays. Hey, come on. I'm I'll listen. Get, I'm trying to get more listeners. No, I do listen to some of them occasionally. Yeah. See? We, we're funny sometimes. They are funny sometimes. I had a point. Where was I going with that? You watch older movies sometimes. I watch older movies sometimes. And, like, we have people, like, yes, everyone in this movie is dead. That doesn't bum me out. As soon as I see an animal and it, it's like, oh, that animal's dead. And then I instantly get, like, super depressed. Mm-hmm. Like, I recognize that there's probably something psychologically wrong with me. Nah. But, like, it's so true. It's like, if a dog showed up right now, I'd be like, oh, that dog's dead. And I'd just be sad. Because, see, my thought on being more sad about an animal death than a person's death. Sorry, this is about to get way we'll get dark. Real deep. Oh, she wears that mustard dress again. Ew, three times. Too many times. Like I feel like Too Rose. Many times. I feel like Rosemary Clooney's worn a different outfit. I haven't yeah. paid attention, honestly. I'm too distracted by the mustard it's dress. It's the mustard. But no, she has worn different dresses. Yeah. Like she wore when they were on the train, she wore a white blouse. Now she's wearing a pink one. And when was the next time she wore the mustard yellow dress? When they were fleeing, she was wearing that same white blouse because they wore the same costumes from fleeing onto the train. But now she's in a pink blouse. And yet Vera Ellen's in the exact same outfit. Again, not a bad outfit. Just... Poorly fitted. Yeah. I like their dishes. Well, this is a really fancy hotel theoretically theoretically aha dig up a democrat (laughs) the 1950s were a different time i like how all of the serving stuff is like hexagonal (laughs) hey wait a minute why don't we bring the entire cast and crew of our musical up here for christmas that's not what he suggested he's like what if have you seen this movie? No, I haven't. I told you this earlier. So Danny Kay says, hey, we should bring our nightclub act back. When it was just the two of us, because we, we're two people. We're just two people. So let's do that. Put the girls in there, too. It'll be great. 
Bing Crosby is now going to go call people and be like, hey guys, we're going to do the whole show here. Surprise! Surprise! I know, I know, everyone's going to be upset about ruining their holiday, but what if we gave them double the money? Yeah, they totally love that. And I, I do really like this this moment here, though, because like they, they <laughs> care about the money, but they don't date it. Yeah. By saying... A number. A number, yeah. But they... Yeah, that, that helps still, make this movie timeless. Yeah, they still get the point across, which I think works really well. Because How much is time... wow? <laughs> I love that. Like, I I just think that works really well. And, like, you know this movie isn't ageless because there's obviously some outdated styles and thoughts and things like that presented in the movie. But, like, that little bit helps. Mm-hmm. Look at her in that knockoff Tommy Hilfiger dress. So cute. Honey, that's the before Tommy Hilfiger was a thing. No, it isn't. Is it? I think so. I don't believe Tommy Hilfiger has been around since the 50s. I don't know if they're one of those fashion lines that's been around for forever. I don't think so. Like Dior. No. Dior was around at this time. Yes, I will give you that. But, no, if that dress was made today by Tommy Hilfiger, it'd be like a $600 dress. A super cute dress. Super cute with that... Those lapels and... Mm-hmm. Ooh, her beret. I put, like... Hats are a hassle and I never want to wear them But they're the so time. cute. But they're so cute and I do love seeing a well-matched hat. Mm. It's so hard. <laughs> the royal wedding next year. Ooh. Like, I don't care about the British <clears throat> royalty at all. I am super excited about watching the fashion come out of it, though. Because yes. the last one was fantastic. I want... A better dress. Yes. I want a more extravagant dress. She's a princess. Be a princess. You're literally a princess. How few people in the world are there that are literally a princess in a literal princess she's, wedding? She's not going to be a princess. Duchess, whatever. Yeah, she ends up being a duchess, which still... Pretty big deal. Bigger yeah. deal than I am. Yep, I'll say that too. <laughs> I bet Danny Kay doesn't Ayo. have a problem packing them in. He's one of those confirmed bachelors from old Hollywood. Meaning that... Like, pretty much it meant open homosexual to everyone but the media? Yeah. Just legs. That's me too. Male gaze isn't a thing at all. I do like how Danny Kay is like, hey guys, I know we had this other lady in the lead, but we're going to put my new girlfriend in here. Yep. Yeah. I've only danced with her once, but she's banging at it. <laughs> and all of you were kind of so-so in the first place, so <laughs> get lost. <laughs> Those... Okay. Ooh. So we're going to talk about this number. <clears throat> the minstrel number. Yeah. This is the one number in this entire movie that does not age well. At all. It's aged like a fine milk. Yeah. Let out in the sun. In Spain. Ooh. Yeah, no, the color here is actually kind of rough. This might just be your TV, because these yeah. suits are green. Are They're they? a dark green, but those suits are supposed oh, to be green. Yeah. Or it could just be a different version. Anyway, this is the... Min- no, there's, there's the green suits. Oh. Maybe their suits are black. I just thought their suits were darker green. No. Oh. So this set, this... What is this? Montage? Not montage. This number. This number is based on minstrel shows. Um, the minstrel show that they specifically reference, Georgie Primrose, was a white man who had white comedians doing blackface. Which is better than other minstrel shows that came prior to that where it was just using and abusing black people. It's not better by any means. Uh, Blackface is not good. You should never do blackface. Ever, ever, ever don't do blackface. Um, So, that being said, there is a history to the song which does not age well. It is very uncomfortable. It was super uncomfortable when I finally realized it. Because yeah. that was another one of those things. Because you just... Like, I was a nerd growing up. Minstrel, to me, meant 
old... Like ye, a jester. Yeah, ye oldie jester who played music. So I never knew, and because we grew up in a fairly white small town, I never necessarily knew the racial connotations that came with minstrel. Yeah. So once I got to college and expanded my horizons and all that, like I put two and two together and did some research. And yes, Georgie Primrose, who's just mentioned... Um, did minstrel shows, and that's not good. So, we recognize that this number is racially insensitive. I feel like they do a good job at just reiterating the acts and not any of the bad racial things. Yeah, I don't think... And see, I think that's saying something about how this movie was made, in that you don't really get a lot of the racial things from this like at all i went a very long time in my life not really realizing the racial things about this and they're there of course Mm -hmm. and like not great of course but like if you're not if you don't know what they are you don't really see them yeah i agree it's it's one of those like we're ignorant of this the subject but that doesn't excuse it yeah. So, um, she dances so well, even though I hate the fit on this one. It looks like she's wearing a diaper, and I think it's just her pelvic bone. Oh, yeah, that is the problem. That That is just her pelvic bone. I feel like she's so skinny. Yeah. Um. Oh, she, her legs are amazing. Yeah, because they're just muscle. Just muscle. Ugh. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I feel uncomfortable watching this number now, but it's still a really well done number. All of the dancers and the musicians are really incredibly talented, especially that guy. Yeah. I'm kind of sad that he somehow didn't make it to be, like, her partner for the entire movie. Yeah. Because like, he's, he's a better dancer than Danny Kay. He is a better dancer than Danny Kay, who is also a trained professional dancer. Yeah. Like, nothing against him. This guy's just better. This guy is just better. Oh. It's just Danny Kay can also sing and it's act. Funny. Yeah. This guy is pretty and he can dance. How much else does he have? Well, we just don't know. That's very true. But he's very pretty. He is very pretty. There you go, looking at the camera again. God. I don't like that part, though, because her head's tilted way back. She looks... Oh, I love that part. Oh, uh, no, she looks like she's possessed or something. Oh, just only because her high kicks are, like, Her high kicks insane. are to die for, but it's, I can't focus on them because I just see her head snap back, and I'm just like, hey. She's just... She's so flexible, and she's so thin. So all the flexibility looks just even yeah. crazier. No transition here. No transition. Just suddenly. Kadunk, kadunk. Everyone's here. How did they all pick up their fans? Tambourines. Or tambourines. Also fans. Also fans. Anything's a fan if you wave it in front of your face. Exactly. Floop. Like how? Floop. Zoop. Katya is, can do that. Well, yes, but Katya is mother. <laughs> like, it's just, I know we're not doing a great job of describing the dancing. But Y'all are looking at it. You're supposed to be watching along with it. If you're not, oh, come on. yeah. I forgot that some people may not actually be watching along I, with this. Um, that's why I was trying to, to describe things. Oh, come shoot. on. Sorry. I just assumed people would want to watch the movie as well. It's on Netflix. Yeah, it's on Netflix. Watch it. I love this set, though. <gasps> she just, just it, throw her. They just throw her down a flight of stairs. And like then when, she continues tumbling down it. Like, how? Why? It's like the end of friggin' um Three whole people in the audience. When Tandy Amon Dupree does Hole Not for a Hero, he mm-hmm. just throws her across the stage and she lands in the splits and she's just like Hey guys. What's up? Oh, here's so we can shove in some romance. No, here is where we can have a man talk down to a woman. <laughs> let me here, honey, let me mansplain this for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see, here we go. Do 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 do. Let me also encroach on your personal space while doing it. And not ask you at all if you're comfortable with any of this. Hey guys, don't do any of that. Yeah. Ask. 
<sighs> it's an this movie is a product of its time. It is. It is very much a product of its time. I wish my sleepwear were half as fabulous right? as Vera Ellen's sleepwear. Like I don't... This is one of her ugliest outfits. And it's a set of pajamas. And it is a set of teal silk pajamas. I... That I would stab a person for They're gladly. Super cute. I also like Rosemary Clooney's here too. Rosemary Clooney is wearing the same ones she was wearing when they were in Florida. It's it's classic. It is classic. You don't mess with it. Vera Ellen got real into the chinoiserie of the time. Yeah, she... Yeah. Half of her outfits are half mandarin collars. Which works on her, and it's a fun they, way to spice up the high neckline requirements that she has. I do, but it's still... There are other collar options. Yep. Yeah. Okay, I'm not hungry, but I'm going to go eat because my fucking sister won't shut the fuck up. God! I've been there. Hey. Just a little dog statue on the table next to the door. Just cuz. Just something for you to bump into and knock off and break <laughs> at some point. Yep. You put your keys on it. I don't like tchotchkes. I don't like them. And 90% of my job is selling tchotchkes. Some weird sign language. Okay, I do love this lodge, though. Oh, like, right? It's so cute. I like how most of it's real, like, typical barn lodge, ski yeah. lodge looking thing. But then that side area is very, like, 60s modern... Not quite. Like, 50s. 50s idea of modern yeah. sitting area. Mm-hmm. With the open with fireplace. How that, yeah. And, yeah. Real sharp lines, minimalistic... Just has a sandwich platter. Just cuz. I could go for a sandwich platter though. I mean, sandwiches are pretty good. I mean, we just had dinner, but God. I could totally go for a sandwich platter. I don't understand this whole sandwich thing. I. Mm, nah. It's a little chilly in here. Why don't we go by the fire? I really, I don't. The older I get, the creepier Bing Crosby becomes. Right. Like you, oh, but this fireplace. It's though. so cute. A little rocking chair there and that bench. Oh, it's so cute. I don't know why she's acting like that. Knee length white wool coat is anything other than a knee length white wool coat. Mm. Why is she acting like it's some sort of like bathrobe? I don't know. Oh yeah, there's another song here. Yeah, it's I it's another one I think this is one of those contractually obligated ones. Yeah. It drags, it drags a little. A little. Maybe that, that could just be Big Crosby's voice. Like he has a slow sounding voice. Like he's a whale. Personified or something. Bing Crosby is just a basset hound. He is just a basset hound. Like. That is fact. Look at Bing Crosby's face next time it's on the screen. Because I recognize that Rosemary Clooney's the pretty one. Mm -hmm. Now just, that's a basset hound. He's a basset hound. Oh my god. Everything makes sense now. Look at that basset hound. Even body shape wise. <laughs> that's why he looks like a barrel. Because he's a basset hound. He's a basset hound. We figured it out. We've cracked this mystery. Bing Crosby's a basset hound. Bing Crosby is a basset hound. I mean, he does have big old ears. I don't... I don't understand this... This song. Count your blessings instead of sheep. <sighs> Existential hey. crisis. Student loan debt. But what if I live... In a remote English countryside and... I'm a sheep... I'm a shepherd, and my blessings are sheep. What do I do then? Why? What was that voice? That's not an English countryside voice. You what? Know. Are you... That, that's exactly what everyone in England sounds like. No. Mm -mm. The queen's sitting there like, Where are all of my corgis? No. Because the queen likes corgis. I know this. I'm sorry, that's an important fact. I feel like that it's just general knowledge. <laughs> Buddy knew. <laughs> if you could 
not hear that. <laughs> that was my cat. He was putting in his two cents. Well, come here. Oh, look at her singing the song back to him. As the sign of like, oh, look, I like you too. Even though everything about her body language says, I'm no, uncomfortable. Please don't. Come here. Though I'll also say her hands might just be like that because the director was like, okay, honey, when you wear your coat over your shoulders like that, it looks like you don't have arms. <laughs> so you need to put your hands in front of you so you have arms again. So I, like that kiss felt so... Bad. It was not a good kiss. His arms aren't long enough. He's, that's, I think. I think that's it, yeah. I think that's the big reason why we like tall male romantic leads so much. Because his arms aren't Because longer. his arms aren't long enough to hug her properly to make it look like quote, he's not quote, like. properly. Quote, unquote, properly. It's just when, he, sometimes when he hugs her, he keeps his hands like splayed it to try and wrap around her. So it looks like he's. Creepy voyeurs. Oh yeah, those weird peepers. Peeping times. Oh, I don't like the scene. Ugh. I just don't. So, we're at the point, at kind of the halfway point of the movie, I think. Um, Bing Crosby is bringing up the mail for the general, who's sitting next to the horseshoes game. And, uh, gets a letter about the military, because he wanted to re-enlist. And, well, it's about to happen, so it's just kind of a a bummer of a scene. And I get it. It's, we're supposed to garner sympathy for the general. It's just, it's a bummer. My problem with it isn't that it's there to garner sympathy. It's that he's already a sympathetic character. Yeah. He, he has a, an in that... Isn't doing it's, super it's great. Not doing well financially. He was a well loved general. And who no longer has his adoring audience, which even if he is like the most modest of people, that's gotta hurt the ego a little bit. Yeah. You're not he's not leading hundreds of men anymore, so mm-hmm. like he's leading two women. Yeah. Oh well, a woman and a girl. Yeah. So Though, a, as Mary Wick said, it took blah, 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 however many men in his unit to replace her. Yeah. So. Because she is a B.A. Indeed she is. Like, I just, I don't like the scene, I think, because they they try to reiterate just how old the general is. Yeah. And it's like, that's why he's useless, because he's old. Yeah. <laughs> it's a real, really ageist. It's not great. Skip that word. We need to keep the rating down. I think this is G. Is it? I don't know. I, th- I thought this movie was not rated. It might be. Because it was pre-ratings. But no, there were ratings. I don't remember. I don't know. Don't care. Whatever. Meh. You've already heard us say fuck a couple times. You obviously don't care about ratings. Maybe you do. Maybe you're sitting at home incensed. (gasps) I thought this was going to be a family-friendly podcast about White Christmas. Get a better... I said to Kermit. Get a better hobby. (laughs) Can we talk about that ascot he's wearing, though? (laughs) (laughs) Gay. My gay brother. <laughs> the one who's a drag queen who's been talking about the clothing this entire time. Just called an ascot. Because it's a fruity ascot. Pejoratively <laughs> called an ascot gay. I mean, we all know that a neckerchief like that is not a heterosexual thing to wear. It is not a heteronormative thing to wear. Ooh, you know what it is? It. is? I'm wrong, actually. Because they're also horrible. So they have to be straight. (laughs) That is a straight man invention. Because they're awful. Because they're awful. Look, Danny Kaye's wearing a nice folded scarf. That is the proper way. Glam. Yeah, that's the proper way to do that. Like, aside from Fred from Scooby-Doo. Who also didn't pull off an ascot. He kind of pulled it off. 
They pulled it off as it's much as like, anyone can. Bing Crosby didn't even tie it well. No. He just tied it on like you're tying on a... Like a like you were tying your shoes. Like the costume director just kind of handed it to him and said, Here, put it on. He was like, what do I do with this? I don't know, just put it on. Okay. Well, More like the costume intern. Yeah. I bet that was supposed to be his pocket square. No, because he got a pocket square. Which is the male. I bet it's supposed to I be... I bet it was supposed to be the pocket square, but then he was like, <laughs> I have to have somewhere to put the mail. And they were like, oh, take out your pocket square. And he was like, what do I do with this? <laughs> Figured it out. Figured out that mystery. Can't figure out why. <gasps> okay, this is so such this, a good number. This is a great number. It's definitely making fun of the modern dance movement that was really taking Broadway at, and such at the time, from my understanding. Um, yeah. So we open with a, oh, who's that one choreographer? Mary Callis? That sounds about right. Or something like that? Caius? Because it's two L's in there. And I think it's Callis. Might... I don't know. Uh, she... Please tell us if we're wrong. Find there us... was a Google Doodle about her. Yes. On her birthday, which was beautiful. It was really cool. Um, but this is kind of making fun of that. We have... Maybe Maria Callis? Something like that. Danny Kay's being his fabulous self. Like, look at that eyeliner. That's not the first time he's wore eyeliner. Like, you can just tell. So they're they're kind of making fun of it with this number. And then we have Vera Ellen come out here. And do some craziness. Vera Ellen comes out and just kills everyone. Slay. You know why all those girls' hair is pulled back like that? They wigs been snatched. No, because it's easier for her to just collect all the scalps if she can just Got grab it. them by the ponytails. Because like, she scalps everyone on the set. So good. Shoot, I'm sitting at home and I'm worried. Might go get a hat. Hold your so hand. she can't scalp me. Like a duck, duck that, that is, is dying. dying. Oh, Instead of dances, choreography. Like, I just, I don't know, I love, okay, oh, this part, this part, this part, this part. Shh. Ooh, so good! <laughs> so good. Oh my god. So, okay, she does this amazing tap thing. Her toes go a million miles a second. It's wonderful. Definitely check it out. Even if you're not going to watch the movie with us, go online. Just watch that. Go online and find the dance number for choreography from White Christmas. Trust me, it's amazing. Whoop! Just pops out of the floor like it's NBD. Also, I think this is my favorite Vera Ellen outfit. Um... Hmm. It's just this cute little pink number. It's way up there if it's not my favorite and it looks so good on her and it doesn't make her look anorexic no because it has a waist detail that Mm -hmm. adds volume there it you can't see how thin her hips are it has a high neckline and you know what it would be really cute with a pair of black skinny jeans and some knee-high boots what just knee-high boots I'm I'm talking about because it looks like a coat. Oh. And so you would want pants so you don't freeze yeah, your legs that's off. That's fair. This doesn't make any sense, though. No, again, I, they're trying to have a dance battle, I think. I think that's what's going on here. This is the first example we have of a dance battle. In film and television, I do believe. Very first. Don't quote me on that. Quote me on that. So, I I just think... That's probably what they're trying to go for here, but West Side Story hasn't been done yet. Has it? No. Has it been done on stage? No, it hasn't been filmed yet. Okay, but has it been done on stage yet? I don't know. (sighs) You're the one who has the musical background. I don't know any years for anything. It's not my problem. Other than Candide came out way earlier than someone would think it would be. Oh, 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 potatoes. Peel a potato. <laughs> I wouldn't know how to peel Bing Crosby's body shape. 
because <laughs> he looks like a potato. Oh, yeah. Um, Mary Wicks is a sh- shoot actress. Remember, I'm making sh- shoot general. Yeah. Mary Wicks is not the best dramatic actress. I mean, I would never even begin to claim that Mary Wicks is an outstanding dramatic actress, but comedic actress. So she does a great job. She, oh, she's so good. She has really great facial expressions. And she's so good at being a shrill old woman, too. Yep. Even at only 42. <laughs> Or however old she is in this film. She's got to be like 28 or something. She's really young, I feel. So young. Maybe not 28. 37? I don't... What's young? What's hip these days? He's just giving me a really bit dirty look right now. Grimes? Is that a hip thing? I don't know. We are watching a movie from the 1950s. Is... On a Tuesday night. Is Ariana Grande still important? I think so. So, because Mary Wicks' character has stuck her nose into other people's business, she is telling misinformation to Rosemary Clooney's character. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage. Misinformation. Misinformation. So yeah, she's a... This is where the plot... The conflict, really, you gotta... You gotta look for it real hard. You gotta suspend your disbelief at this point. Because it, like, honestly... Because why doesn't Rosemary Clooney just go talk to Bing Crosby? Unless she is a terrible human being. I'm gonna believe this housekeeper who I've known for 15 minutes, as opposed to this man who I might be in love with. This man I've known for 20 minutes. (laughs) She is really flying by the seat of her pants. Taking life advice from random people. I know I'm going to be a bitch to Danny K for no reason. Again, she like all she has to say is, I think it's really unfair that you're going to abuse him like that. And yeah. And like, hey, that's not the point. We're not doing that. Done. This is why you got to talk, people. Share your feelings and emotions with other people. Ooh, I love this outfit. This is such a good outfit. Your Ellen just came back on screen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. It- Audience, anytime we go, ooh, such a good look, chances are Vera Ellen just walked back on stage. Yeah. Or screen. It's a sound stage, though, so I mean, stage. same diff. It's a really cute little outfit she's got, like this, this little uh, kind of houndstoothy skirt. With the red belt and mm-hmm. a black sweater with white neck Turtle detail. Neck. Yeah. So cute. So cute. I like what Rosemary Clooney's wearing here, too. It's simple, but it's it's both... I would have liked it better if instead of being a skirt, it were a pair of, like, ankle, like, capri skinny slacks. Ooh, yeah. That, that would have been, been really cute. cute. I just, we're rocking the mustard yellow again, though. It's not, it's not as bad. mustard. It's no. a paler, creamier yellow, but it's still kind of mustardy. And it works... Because it works well. It's not an entire outfit of it. It's yellow yeah. and black. So And you I love the black sleeves showing it's at the end so of the yellow cute. sleeve. It's like such it's a cute look. Little details. Again, I would put a necklace on it. I think the black undershirt helps though. The black undershirt helps give some visual detail there, but like for filming, I like her not having a necklace because it keeps the look cleaner Mm -hmm. for wearing in life i would give her a necklace i'd give her a small one yeah maybe ooh, maybe like a nice little set of pearls a nice little set of pearls i was thinking a nice little like jewel diamond pendant or something yeah something maybe not diamonds because they're artificially inflated but something that's actually pretty so yeah right now rosemary clooney is being a bitch for no reason Ooh, but that line, that's quite a remark. It's the best I can do. Ooh, ooh, that clap back. I'm she was just like. It's the best I can do. Mm. Drama match, miss. I've mm. used that. I've used that in real for real life arguments. I mean, I've been in an argument with someone where they were like, "Well, that's quite a remark," and I was just like, 
I'm sorry, it's the best I can do. And I was just like, snap, but like, snap. yeah, I was doing the cheering and the dancing in my head, but on the outside, I was just like, Stoney. <sighs> Is it houndstooth or just diamond? Who cares? It's gorgeous. It's really cute. Oh, and little red pumps. I didn't notice the pumps before. The red belt, I think, really works well. Yeah. Because it's the right shade of red. Yeah. Oh, that's a very stiff skirt, though. (laughs) That's real stiff. Is it polka dots, maybe? I don't know, but if the angle were a little different and the lighting were a little different, you could see straight up that skirt. It's so it's stiff. It's so stiff. It's like upholstery. It has to be like hound's tooth. And yeah, like... or some sort of tweed. Yeah. It is checkered. Oh, okay. I was trying to figure out what he was doing. He just walked up to the TV to like get super close to it. It is checkered, by the way. Checkered. Checkered. Okay. It's super cute. So cute. So now we have this weird sexual tension moment where Vera Ellen is like super coming on to Danny Kay, but he's too gay to understand what's going on. See, she said Vera Ellen's coming on to Danny Kay. I view it as Vera Ellen's about to eat Danny Kay. Oh, yeah, that's fair. That is... Because she's like predatory in it's very a much really creepy sense it's uncomfortable like if this had horror movie music underneath it like 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 some cluster chords on strings mm-hmm. or high violin switch the genders yeah if you switch the genders this would be super super uncomfortable yeah like we do not condone Vera Ellen's actions here no Vera Ellen's actions here are very inc- her hand is very high on his thigh and he is very much not consenting to this. Come on, Vera Ellen. You can do better for, than that. Vera Ellen, this is rape culture. Why are you perpetuating rape culture? He's obviously a gay man. Leave him alone. And then she's like, well, it wasn't even for me. I don't like you all that much anyway. Again, Yandere. Yeah, that's manipulation. Don't fall for it. Come on, Danny Kay. You deserve better. And then she's like, Oh, I wasn't trying to come on to you, person who's obviously opposed to the idea. I was just thinking of them. She's such Harlot. Predator. She's a predator. She, predator. And see, we're talking about, like, she seems like a creepy sexual predator, but also in, like, she looked like she was going to devour his flesh. Yeah, no. Her that also was, looked like a thing. Jaw was getting ready to unhinge and just maybe oh. not unhinge, but like split, like they do in the Ooh, Blade movies. Yeah. <laughs> She's now like uh. leaning over him and stroking his leg. Cast party tonight. Yeah. Woo Open bar. I hate smelling tonight like that. Her dress is made out of that. Oh, a similar material. That's that, a very cute dress too. That is cute. It's on the daughter this time. Oh, look, we have Doris. Doris she's is here. Back. She's... Remember, she's in the cast. Isn't this a lovely party? Mutual, I'm sure. Oh. I love Rosemary Clooney's dress. It's so good. It's this dark green velvet. Something like that. With, with just these, like... Very minimal neck details. Strips of just, like, piping. So So cute. Oh, hey, we're going to further manipulate people. And Mira Mm -hmm. Ellen's just wearing a simple white skirt with a simple white sweater with a little bit of embellishment. Which makes sense. She's supposed to be all bridal and such. This is their engagement, well, soon to be announced engagement party. Mind you, Doris. Doris showed up to slay. Yeah, Doris is a man eater. She's trying to find somebody. She makes that very plain. Indeed, she does. Good on her. I mean, she knows what she wants. She's going after it. Can't blame that. And she's not hurting anyone in the process. No. Buddy, no. That's very sexist of you. She can have her own agency, buddy. She's allowed to sleep around if she wants to. As long as she does it smart and safe and doesn't hurt nobody. Mm Mm-hmm. Get tested, kids. See, 
<laughs> these two are a wonderful match. He's a weird looking dude and she just looking for money. I just found out Doris's last name. What was it? Lettuce. Doris Lettuce? Oh, that's a bad name. That's he a... just walked up and introduced her as Miss Lettuce. That's a bad, even fake name. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage. Doris, Doris Lettuce. Lettuce. That's that's my new drag name. Doris Lettuce. No relation to Hedda. None. So now they're announcing their fake engagement. Because I need a beard. <laughs> White Christmas fake wedding, fake marriage AU. Ooh, I like that pale blue floral print dress. I love that dress. Every time. So cute. Uh. It's just a very standard 1950s cocktail dress with a very nice print it's not spectacular in any sense of the mean just, just a just real cute dress really well well tailored nice it fitted. fits very well <laughs> look it's rose the lawn from homestuck don't get that reference no one gets that reference okay some if you get that reference you have no way to get in contact with me. Contact the, the at the Immortals Twitter. At the Immortals Pod on Twitter. At the Immortals Pod on Twitter, and explain it to me because I don't know what's going on. And she'll let me know, and I'll laugh. Yep, you guys can share a joke together. This calls for champagne. I'll help get myself out of this really uncomfortable social situation. Yep. Danny Kay's absolutely scared shitless here. Yep. I think Bean Crosby might be as well. Well, he has to go face the wrath of Rosemary Clooney. I'd be a who, little scared too. Who will not explain why she's upset. No. <laughs> Everyone else just has to figure it out. Yes, bastards. Oh my god. I'm Rosemary Clooney. <laughs> I'm glad you're just not figuring this out. I'm angry and I don't know why and I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> Perfect. So glad that you've shared that. Now they're going to have a cute dance and pretend that they like each other. Where Danny Kay is just really thinking about that hot dancer guy. Who is... That guy's suit is so big on him. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. I never noticed that. <laughs> it was really big on him. That guy's fives look really similar to sixes, I guess. Because that suit must have been at least a full foot too big for him. Yeah, it was big. Mm. Buddy just jumped on the couch and now we're I'm enjoying the cat because I don't have a cat at home. Buddy's a very cuddly cat. He's a better cat than, than Imogen. He's a better cat than anyone's cat. I know, that's what I keep telling everybody. Nobody believes me. Prove us wrong, show us your cat pictures. Yes. Try to prove me wrong that your cat is cuter than my cat by sending me lots and lots of cat pictures. There's no ulterior motive here. Nope. Or ulterior ones either. That's what I meant. That's what I said. You said ulterior. Ulterior. I meant ulterior. <laughs> oh, now we're going to be sad and Rosemary Clooney's going to continue to not tell anyone <laughs> what she's feeling. Not talk to anybody. Not even her sister, who they literally work together. Like, I don't think you can get much closer siblings than that. Nope. There, she's just so bad at communicating. Like, she just could have stopped and said, hey guys, I'm really upset right now. And that, that would have been enough. People would have started a conversation there and been like, oh, I'm sorry, why are you so upset? Okay, but then she gets to wear a fabulous it's coat. Such a great coat. I love this coat. Ooh, Rosemary Clooney needs to spend more of this movie upset because she gets the best clothes when she's not feeling good. Look at that hat. It, notice how she's wearing black. Oh. And, mm. and how she wears black in the next scene. And it's it's and not she, all black either. It's b dark gray on black, which is a very smart costuming choice. But you notice that? Like, she's upset it's with stunning. everything. It's stunning. It's stunning. We're gonna have lots of trains. Can your rinky dink little train station handle it? Once again, Bing Crosby's here mansplaining to another man this time, even. Mm 
I know train conductor that you probably know how to run a train station, but I'm let gonna me tell you how to do it anyway. Let me tell you how to run your train station, Mr. Train Conductor Man. I've got a job in New York. I'm not explaining why I'm leaving. I'm just okay. Bye bye. I'm apologizing. I'm, for, apologizing. I'm apologizing for something I said that sounded wrong because I don't know what I actually did wrong because you won't tell anyone. Because you won't tell anybody what you're feeling. Just talk to me. Okay, guys, let's get a really great dance number with Vera Ellen before she finds out about her sister. <laughs> another great dance routine and another great outfit. This, I think, might be my favorite outfit. I know I said that one about the pink one. But I really like this little one. It's another mustard yellow, which we already know looks This one's a, more of a, like, sunflower, like, bright yellow. It's a brighter yellow. It has less gray in it. But it's... I like, love that cute. belt. The just... Ugh. It's those a, three strips of black on the belt. Mm -hmm. So good. Really cute belt. Matching dance shoes. With the super attractive dance partner again. No singing in this number. Just, just dancing. We know this is a musical, but... Just dancing. Vera doesn't get to sing? No. But, she, like, this dance sequence is phenomenal. I love it. <laughs> shoulders, shoulders. She's just so tiny, and she's so thin. So. And so good dancer. So, so good dancer. So good dancer, I said, making a reference to a bonus track off of the soundtrack for an obscure off-Broadway musical. Wow. How many levels of gay can you be? Not that. Oh, I like this little clapping uh, thing. The really aggressive clapping. We're gonna clap sword and smile at you. Okay, is it just me or does it seem like in old Hollywood everyone was Italian and then yeah. nowadays <laughs> there aren't nearly as many Italians in the film? I think it's just because there were a lot of them in New York. Maybe... I don't know, but in old Hollywood, there were a lot of Italian people. Yeah. And it seems like there aren't as many people with Italian last names in Hollywood anymore. Oh, wait, is that a metallic belt? I think it might be. So we have a letter now from Betty to Judy, from Rosemary Clooney to Vera Ellen, about why she's leaving she's leaving she says in this letter because she feels like she no longer needs to watch her little sister which i feel like is something that she should have discussed with her sister maybe just maybe like this whole movie is a how not to interpersonal relationships yeah and now they're admitting to but vera ellen changed outfits first yes <laughs> <laughs> she was wearing like a super short mini skirt true and now she's revisiting that checkered skirt again. But without the black top on. Yeah, over without it. the black sweater. Just the just, just the che the checkered skirt that's incredibly stiff. With the white turtleneck. And okay, but it does fall beautifully so well. being that stiff. Yeah. She probably has a nice cradle in underneath it too. It, it it's just falling in these big wide pleats. Like there's probably maybe like four of them around the skirt. It looks great on her. But anyway. They are uh, admitting to Bing Crosby that they set up the whole fake engagement to get Betty and Bob together. And that's why Betty left. And so now Bob is saying, well, I have to go to New York anyway. I'll go save this. Because you guys are assholes. Yeah, because you guys don't know how to be fucking adults. <laughs> Nobody knows how to share their emotions. And so Bing Crosby, the dad of the movie, has to go and tell everybody, this is how you act. This is how humans express themselves to one another. We talk and we use our words, sometimes song. Occasionally dance number. Unless you're Vera, then it's just dance, dance number. <laughs> Occasionally you can be here for a group number, but Rosemary's gonna sing your part. <laughs> you just be cute, okay? Like, the carousel club... I want that cigarette girl outfit. Like... I just want this to be my living room. The Carousel Club. Stay the Carousel up. Club with the... Look at the her. Oh, so cute. The, the, yes. Okay. The, there's a girl who's walking around selling cigarettes out of a little tray. And she's in the cutest little purple number. It is very adorable. But this isn't what I would want... This is going to sound crazy. But 
I don't want the carousel club to be my living room or my bedroom because that would be the next logical step. Yeah. I think it looks like a bathroom. It does look like a bathroom, like a really fancy bathroom. Yeah, like the whole place looks like what the bathroom of this place should look like. Oh, hey, Rosemary Clooney also doesn't have a say when it's just even her band director. I know that this is a song that we said we were going to perform, but I really don't feel comfortable performing it. Can we do something else? Oh, but no, honey, the other one sounded so good. I know the song is really emotionally poignant for the scene here, but I don't want to do it because I don't want to discuss my feelings because I'm a bad adult. Mm -hmm. Rosemary Clooney again in black. With, it's almost like it's symbolizing something. With some gorgeous dancers. The dancers are beautiful. There are these four men in... Uh, one Tight black outfits. Black pants, black turtlenecks. And she's wearing this gorgeous black dress with some intricate neckline the, details. The neckline is wonderful. I hate those gloves, The though. gloves, though. The, okay, the costumer did a great job, except on her gloves. Because they all look like oven mitts. They do. They don't fit her fingers. They're bulky. And they're made out of a material that isn't suited for gloves. Like, I love... I love a good opera-length glove. Hell yes. yes. Especially paired with a dress like that. Beautiful. But not that material. Those aren't even opera-length. No. They're, what, what's that called? What's that length called? Uh, our mother would know. I don't remember. If you know, find us at The Immortals Pod on Twitter and tell us. Or visit theartimmortal.com. By the way, in case you aren't watching and you're just listening, they come to just below her elbow. Oh, yeah. I'm giving a description of what they actually look like. Yeah. It's not opera because it doesn't go up her arm. Her, yeah. Her upper arm. It just goes like below her elbow whatever length that is it would look wonderful with this dress if they didn't look like oven mitts i always forget about that weird butt detail what was that the weird butt detail weird on the back of the dress detail. yeah that weird sparkly spiral because i just think it's superfluous i don't think it's needed the neckline is enough and then they repeat the shapes of the neckline down the back but mm -hmm. pl more plunging a gorgeous dress. I love that dress. And, you know, Rosemary Clooney can... Oh, she can sing. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't say anything in that part because I really wanted... I was lip syncing A and B. I wanted y'all to really just listen to it if you're watching along. I love that little lilt the... part. Oh. Oh. I love that part. I need to perform that one. Like, this is such a good song. It it's just... She's so beautiful and so wonderful. It's just so short. I mean, I'm okay with how long it is. I need it to be longer because then it gives me more time to collect tips. She's just beautiful. She is gorgeous. I love that dress. The dress is really everything. You do notice that her hair has not changed at all. <laughs> not once. Not a single strand of her hair has moved in the course of this film. I think the hairdresser just did it once when she showed up, did it in glue, and we're just like, just yeah. don't do anything. Either that or she just has 50 wigs that look exactly the same. 50 wigs that all the same. Got them good lace fronts. Mm -hmm. But that hair is laid. It's so pretty. I wish my hair was ever that flat. Yeah, like, no, not a flyaway. Darn. My head is nothing but flyaways. I don't have that feeling. Oh, I wish I could stop yawning. Yeah, you could. You should try to stop talking and yawning. Doesn't make for good podcasting. Nah, it's great. Well, that's probably what I sound like. That was me making fun of you, by the way. Yeah, no, that was perfectly clear. Yep, I, okay. I didn't get you as that being you making fun of me. I was just like, yeah, no, that's normal. That's just speech. That's how people talk. No. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's how people talk. Oh. There was a really heavy-handed metaphor about Knights on White Chargers. It's been going for a while. I don't like it. And it could be done so much better. And then they threw... They leaned into it here with it being a carousel club full of black and white horses. Like, mm -hmm. yikes. And again, Rosemary Clooney's been wearing black ever since her and... Bob fought. Yeah. Okay, so it's 
It's not a great movie, but it's a good one. It's a perfectly fine movie. They almost had a chance to talk, and now they don't have it, because Bing Crosby's got to go talk on air. Though I will say that cigarette, those cigarette girls, their costumes were really distracting, because the whole scene was all black and white. But then these bright fuchsia outfits. Just like dotting along in the back, yeah. Oh, I gotta watch my TV program. I gotta watch the channel. My my shows, my stories. I did like that outfit Barry Allen's wearing. I don't think I've ever noticed it before. Like yeah. Like a little red blouse. I wish I knew what was the pattern on the blouse. I hope it's dogs. It'd be cute if it were dogs. I don't think it is, though. It's probably not dogs. So Danny Kay fell down the stairs. Fake fell down the stairs. Because he's good at faking injuries, as we know already. From him faking his injury. With yeah. Bob Wallace. So he's faking an injury to try to get the general to not watch the TV show that Bing Crosby is going to go and recruit people on. Oh yeah, because we kind of uh, missed that whole part. They're going to go recruit all of the troops that were in their company. To come back for a Christmas celebration for the general. It's a nice thing that they're doing. and it's So they need to get to a lot of people in a short period of time so TV worked because Twitter wasn't a thing at the time. Or texting. Like, just one group text would have been like, hey y'all. LOL, look at this funny gift I found. (laughs) Oh yeah. Also, come to this place in Vermont. It's gonna be super lit. AF. Lit AF. VA. Fire emoji. Hundred emoji. Checkmark emoji. Fire emoji again. Yep. So we have the Ed Harrison show. Where Bing Crosby's gonna go on and talk about... He's gonna sing a song. A weird little song. A little weird, sad, bummer of a song. It's just continuing that whole pity the general. He's useless now. Look how sad old people are. Mm, That's the plot of this movie. Old people are useless. Old people. Look how sad these old people are. They can't contribute to society anymore. Think <laughs> yeah, that's not a good plot. No. Bleh. I don't like this song. I don't like this song. I don't like that flower arrangement. I don't like those curtains. Those hearty mums. Nothing? Okay, I don't care how much you like mums. If you want to make a glamorous, elegant table arrangement, you you don't use mums. Mums are a really great outdoor flower because they stay blooming even through the fall. So, like, real pretty in your yard. Yeah, they look terrible. Don't. On this little black and white TV, they look like crap. Yeah. They look garbage. We're talking about a flower arrangement. They're okay because we don't want to talk about the song because it's not a good song. He's pleading for people to come. And this is the first time Betty's actually watching this and realizing, oh man, I done fucked up. If If only I had told somebody what my emotions were. If only I had talked to literally any other person about this. Yeah. Literally anyone else. Could have told me. And my thought that I just had about this is, hasn't Mary Wicks found out the truth by now? Yep. Can't Mary Wicks have gone and told Rosemary and been like, hey, yo, I got this wrong. My bad. I only got half the story, so here's the truth. Here's what's happening. No, she doesn't. She doesn't care. No. You know why? Mm -hmm. Because Mary Wicks is that bitch. She's that She's here for the drama. She was like, you know... I could have one, like, two-minute conversation and solve all of the problems everyone's having. Or I could watch these idiots continue to Mm self-destruct. Which one sounds like more fun in this remote ski lodge in Vermont where there's nobody to look at or talk to or interact with? Hmm, I wonder. Oh my god, I done fucked up. If only I had talked to anybody about my emotions. And my and these earrings. 
Because they were a choice. They didn't really fit. Well, they were superfluous. They went with that dumb superfluous butt detail. Yeah. A smaller earring would have been perfect. Mm Mm-hmm. Or even just a straight up and down one. Yeah. Or maybe one that was mostly straight up and down but had a weird zigzag in the middle of it to to go with the weird zigzag Mm, detail. That could have been too matchy-matchy. So people are showing up at the inn now along with the uh, old troops. They're going to surprise Oh, hey, shirtless. One of them in... So in this time period of movie, even the men weren't allowed to be completely shirtless. Yeah. But there was one. Snuck in there in the back. Just like how I like my men to sneak Sneak in in the back. Oh, ho, ho, fat joke. And, uh, they schemed to get the general to wear his general's uniform. Without letting him know why he's wearing his general's uniform. Like, I just feel like... There's a whole lot of meme happening. Here. Can we talk about Mary Wix's look it's here? It's so cute. Like, glam. So good for her. I want that. Yeah. I want that for me. I mean, I want that for me. I'd wear that. That's a really I cute want that dress. for you. That's a really cute dress. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I want it for me. Mm-hmm. Oh, look, Betty made it back in time. Okay, but how shitty would Betty's understudy be? Right. I've learned all these roles. I have my big chance. I I knew I wasn't going to get it because they're both going to screw these girls, but whatever. But I've got my chance. I'm going to be on stage. And then Betty shows up. But shows up minutes before showtime. Minutes before. They probably walked up to the girl and was like, get out of that costume. We need to put Betty in it. Yep. Ooh. Been so shitty. This is the most screen time that girl has gotten in the entire movie. Her one close up. Oh, Grandpa. Not even a no. Oh, she says you look wonderful. And now she's done talking. Forever. I, I get a little choked up at this part. It's just so sweet. It and really I don't is. Don't understand why. Again, we're not. We're, we're not military. We're not military. It's just. It's so like. I think because the movie itself has been shitting on this character the, the whole time, the, the entire time. I think that it's just like, oh, finally, he's getting a little bit of recognition. Yeah. And that's nice. So. Honestly, from where I've been sitting my whole life watching this film, I never viewed him as having that bad of a lot. No, but... He's got... But he the, retired peacefully. He lived. He survived Impressive. World War II. He seems to be fairly mentally stable, which is surprising. He so has a huge ski lodge in Vermont mm-hmm. that I assume in good weather, it's very successful. Yeah. Hey, look. Oh, it's the song. It's the soundstage that they used (laughs) earlier when they were in Europe. Oh, look, it's the exact same soundstage. Like, those are the same same props. Yeah. Exact same props. I mean, I'd use them. I mean, yeah, reusing them just makes sense, but come on, guys. I'm really glad we're not listening to this because I don't want to be crying right now. It's one of those weird things. I always get choked up, and I think it's just because it's all these people coming together, celebrating this one person that's special in their life. And with how many times I've seen this movie, you'd think I wouldn't do get choked up yeah, like this but anymore. Still. But I do. It's just really well done. <sighs> it's not like even like the general can act very well. No. He has like one look the entire movie. And it's kind of like, like that sort of not completely distant stare, but like... Mm-hmm. Middle stare. Yeah. He's going to inspect the troops now and read them for Phil's because he's the hard general, but he cares about them.
Anzio. I don't know. Italy? Means. Were they in Italy? Oh, that makes sense. That's Europe-y. Yeah, that's Europe. We fought Italy in, in Italy some. Yeah, I think so. That sounds right. I never saw anything so See, wonderful in my life. I pictured them being on more of the, like, forward front, like... Yep, I agree. Germany... Uh, that could just be France. one of the many inconsistencies with this movie. Possibly. There are tons of them. I mean, they could have just been in a battle in Italy. Yeah. There were lots of battles in Italy, too. I don't know. I don't think the movie knows or cares. I Yep. The movie probably doesn't care. The movie probably was just like, well... Whatever. It works. They were in the war. <clears throat> The dumbest it. candles. Like, they're full taper candles. Who puts full tapers? Maybe it's a 50s thing. Maybe. To just put full tapers like, in your these cake. These are like 8, 10 inch taper candles. Yeah. On a cake. Just full, big red tapers. Just. Like, it is bigger than an entire tier of that cake. Yeah. Like, this weird three tier cake with a helicopter on top. Because that makes sense. Because Army. Mm -hmm. Not Air Force Army. I I always liked this song. Yes. This song is so fun. It it is a really fun song. It's, uh, gee, I wish it was back in the Army. And I think it's, I, it's another one of those songs where you feel like Danny Kaye and Bing Crosby had fun doing it. Yeah. Which there are other times in the movie where they do not seem like they're enjoying themselves. And I'm just trying to imagine this movie with, like, Fred Astaire. I don't think it would have been It good. would have suffered. Like, Fred Astaire is a wonderful dancer, don't get me wrong. But, but he's not as likable. Yeah. He has a smug look about him. Yeah. All the time. You just kind of want to hit him. Just a little bit. Not hard. Just like... Yeah. <laughs> There's always someone higher up for you to pass the buck. I have taken that lesson to heart. Something went wrong at work. It's not my fault. Rosemary Clooney can't dance. Surprise, surprise. Even Even in simplistic choreography, Vera Ellen does it well, and Rosemary Clooney doesn't... Can't even move her arms back and forth. Like an octopus out of water. (laughs) Just swing them around. Like it was a real quick left-right sharp movement, and Rosemary Clooney was just like (laughs) wobbling her arms back and forth, and it's like, honey. No. I don't like this isn't this one of those songs I like because they show that women were in the military too. Yeah. It's not something that's really celebrated a lot, especially for World War Two, which is weird because women were really important. Yeah. What is that Oh my god, Vera Ellen has some cinnamon buns on the sides of her head. I didn't notice the little paint attention. Just little little blonde croissants. Oh. <laughs> Secret Princess Leia inspiration. Nah, I don't think so. Lucas isn't that detail oriented. Mm. I mean, yeah. <laughs> but the costumer might have been. Mm. This is just a fun song, and then they have this this fun little the little stage breakdown. Thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay, no. Even if you just watch their feet here. Rosemary Clooney. She doesn't even, like, do all the steps. She's like, okay, I'm going to shuffle this way now. I'm going to kind of shuffle here. Meanwhile, everyone else is actually tapping. And she's just, like, swinging her feet about. (laughs) She's here to sing, just like Vera Ellen's here to dance. Yep. How great would it be to actually just be one of the extras in that audience? I think it would be a lot of fun. No, okay, I don't get this part either because we have someone come in to announce, hey, it's snowing. Okay, because this has been like one of the background plot points for the entire movie. But it's fucking Vermont. Right. It's like saying, hey, the sun came out today. My favorite thing is that Mary Wixon, the granddaughter, very clearly stayed seated at that table. And then they're Mm -hmm. suddenly standing in the doorway. Oh my gosh, look, it's snowing. Oh, there she is back again in that one. 
Let's open the barn doors. That seems like a great idea. Let's let in all that cold Those air. Those barn doors were already cracked, hon. The air was already coming also, in. Also, what the fuck is this horse and carriage doing here? There's no way they got those horses up and ready to go on that sled. On that sound set. On that sound set with that little snow on the ground. Like, come on, people. Be realistic here. Yeah. Be realistic in this Christmas movie. It's a Christmas miracle, Luke. You know what? Lee. You know what? I'll say that, like, as far as Christmas movies go, while cheesy, it's not saccharine. No. It's got enough heavy-handed, made-up conflicts <laughs> yeah. to be not just pure sugar. Yeah. like we These still... dresses. This, this we... is how you do a Christmas look. They're so good. Mm. I want that. I want, I want that for me. I want them both. They're so gorgeous. I want Vera Ellen's better. I do. I like hers more. I do love Vera With the Ellen. capelet. Mm-hmm. And the big muff. Ugh. And that little hat. It's not a hat. It's just a ring around her bun. It's still adorable. All Where... her hair is up in a bun and she's just got a ring around it. Whereas Rosemary Clooney is wearing the same hairstyle she's been wearing the entire movie. But she she snagged one of those ornaments off the tree and threw it in. She was like, oh crap, it's Christmas time. So I think this I think this movie does a good job. It has it's by no means complicated. It is not No. It's not going to preach to you in What's the message? What's this movie's point? I don't know. It has no hypothesis. It has it no doesn't, thesis. No statement really. It's just This being... movie isn't saying anything other than look at these fun dance numbers. Yeah. And good songs. With a very tenuous plot connecting them all. Which, I mean, if you're looking for something to have on to get you in that Christmassy spirit while you're drinking eggnog or a spiked apple cider or mm-hmm. spiked hot chocolate or... Or just, 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 just drinking. Just doing shots. Yeah. I mean, it's a great movie to have on. Whatever gets you through Christmas. Yeah, you know. I love how that little girl was lighting candles. On the yeah. She's like, I'm going to throw this stick up here. Light some candles. Oh, let me open my... Oh, oh, it's a dumb white horse... White knight tchotchke. Like, that, I think that's the most disgusting part of this movie. Is him getting that dumb present. Yes, and then this weird awkward kiss again. Little awkward kiss. Just drops the present into the tree. <laughs> Danny Kaye is like, hey, I want to make out with you. And Bing Crosby is like, no, remember, we're straight. I got my own lady here. Oh, I guess I should do that too. Ew. Ew. I don't understand the, how that works. Are the barn doors right behind? Well, yeah, because this wasn't actually a stage. Okay, fair enough. It was a ski lodge, and so there was just a big barn. Fair enough. So we end... White Christmas. Oh, everyone's singing it now. Everyone's joining in. Which, should we be drunker? Yes. They lit the candles again, because they're tapers and we can. Yeah. (laughs) That's why you use tapers in your cakes, everybody. So you can light them again and again. Half the cake's eaten. Whatever. I'm ready for tapers. I'm ready for this cake to be on fire. We have this nice little moment in the movie. The end. Oh, it even says Merry Christmas. Oh, that's cute. So that was White Christmas. A very special White Christmas. Indeed it was. I gotta find the remote. I don't want to watch. It's right there. That's not the remote I want. Isn't it? No. There's the remote. Oh. I don't want to watch the trailer for The Christmas Prince. So, yeah, we hope you enjoyed it. Um, let us know your thoughts. Uh, do you, I love it. Oh, I mean, yes. I, bo- I love this movie as well. Do you have your own Christmas tradition that you do with your family, whether it be watch a movie obsessively or just do something fun? Uh, let us know. Share with us. I, that's one of the things I think I like most about Christmas or is like or the holiday season are all those fun little traditions that people have. Yeah, like what what kind of food do you guys 
always, 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 always have. Are you, are you one of the families that has a pickle ornament? We do you, don't. Do you know what a pickle ornament is? I discovered it, like, maybe three or four years ago. Like, I oh. had no idea what it was. And see, I've known about it for a while because I have friends who do it. Yeah. So, yeah, tell us about the weird things that you guys do that other people may not. Let us know. Tell us about it. Share your Christmas feelings or your holiday feelings or your anti-holiday feelings because I had a bunch of those, too. Ooh. But that's a, that's a different podcast. We're trying to yeah. stay. Yeah happy and everything let's let's watch a different movie for that one kill bill let's yeah. watch kill bill volume one for uh when we talk about our real feelings about the holidays sounds like a good plan so uh yeah let's wrap it up uh i'm i'm lee i'm robert thank you for listening with us and happy holidays bye